Whether a service, product, or a mix of both, the purpose of your business is to create value for your customers. However, the challenge will always remain in how to convert the value created into revenue for your business. The Revenue Map is a useful tool for transferring the value your business creates into cash for your business. The Revenue Map consists of five separate stages, with each stage separate from the other. When followed rigorously and in combination with each other, these five steps are guaranteed to improve business. Like the other tutorials in the series, this tutorial will focus on one core aspect of the revenue map process. The underlying concept will be discussed along the benefits of using the method. References will also be made to other stages in the system covered in previous tutorials. You can refer to any of the other tutorials in the series at any time throughout by simply clicking on the relevant icons here. This tutorial is divided into four sections. Overview, which will give you a brief overview of the session and where it fits in with the rest of the revenue map system. The core explains why this tutorial is important and the reason it should be part of your day-to-day -day business practice. Processing will guide you on how to perform the necessary steps required for this tutorial in your Klavan's dashboard. The summary will summarize all the key points in this tutorial. Once you have profiled your customers, as shown in stage one, and prepared your order book, stage two, the next stage in the system covers invoicing your customers. According to research by leading debt collection agencies, one of the main reasons invoices remain unpaid is due to incorrect details on an invoice. Starting with the most common, some of the errors are the items or services invoice are not as per ordered, the customer details isn't stated correctly on the invoice, the company details, for example name, address, company number, etc. are missing from the invoice, the invoice is not dated or referenced properly, the VAT number is missing. No payment details included on the invoice. No payment terms noted on the invoice. These and a variety of other errors on your invoices will deter your customer from paying and eventually have a negative effect on your cash flow. Sending complete, accurate, and timely invoices to your customers is one of the most important aspects of running a business. Also, with each invoice raised, a number of entries need to be made in your company's books to ensure the transactions are recorded correctly in your company's accounting records. Most businesses, even today, prepare invoices using Excel or Word templates. Though this does provide a standardized system and if set up correctly, will include the correct details on the invoice. However, logistically, using Excel, Word, or other templates has flaws. In a template model, you have to make sure all the necessary details required on an invoice are included. Since this is done manually with no structure to follow, the chances of errors occurring and missing important information are high. This could lead to an incomplete invoice being sent to your customer. The details for each order have to be added manually into the template, hence errors can occur. For example, when invoicing a mixture of vatable and non-vatable items, the template will not be able to differentiate between the VAT treatments of the different items, hence leading to the invoice being inaccurate. With a template, once the necessary items being invoiced are entered, the template will usually need to be converted into a PDF saved locally on your computer, attached to an email, and then emailed across to your customer. This leads to a series of steps that need to be completed every time an invoice is prepared and sent. If a step is missed, delays will occur. 
Other reasons why using a template invoicing system is a bad idea are the accounting entries that need to be recorded in your company's books when the invoice is raised and issued will need to be entered separately outside of the invoicing system. If the entries are missed, discrepancies will occur between what was invoiced and what is recorded in the company's books. If your business details change, for example your address, email, mobile phone, etc., the fact that the template is operated outside of an accounting system, the changes in details will need to be updated manually. If not, they will continue to display the old or obsolete contact details of your company. These are just a few of the reasons why invoicing using template formats is a bad idea and you stop using them. An invoicing system that is integrated with your customer database and your bookkeeping system will ensure complete, accurate and timely invoicing to your customers and result in faster payments. Your Klarman's dashboard has an integrated invoicing module built in, eliminating the need of any templates. This invoicing module is intrinsically linked to the company detail sections of your dashboard, your customer database, and your stock book. Therefore, every time there's a change or an update in the details of your company, or the items in your stock book, or the specifics of your customers, these will be automatically be reflected in the invoices you generate from your dashboard. To access the invoicing module, log into your dashboard. Go to the customers area and click on raise invoice. The invoice fields will now be displayed. When completing the fields, always aim to work across the screen from left to right. This approach will ensure all the necessary fields and options are completed and no important information is left out. From the first stage of the revenue map, customer profiling, you would have already registered and profiled your customers in your dashboard. The customers already registered in your dashboard will appear in this drop-down menu. Whichever customer is being invoiced, start by selecting the customer from the drop-down menu. If the customer being invoiced is not listed, click here on the Add Customer icon. This will take you back to the customer registration screen outlined in the first stage of the revenue map, Customer Profiling. You can view the first stage of the revenue map at any time by clicking here. Next, allocate the invoice and internal reference. A sequential reference number will be auto-generated by your dashboard each time an invoice is raised. However, you can overwrite and can enter a custom reference for this invoice, more in line with your business which may make the invoice easier to identify if needed. This reference is important as it acts as the main identifier for this invoice when viewing reports or performing detailed searches on your customers. It is also displayed on all the invoices and statements you generate from your dashboard. Next, you will notice the credit available amount. You may recall from step one of the revenue map, customer profiling, to allocate a credit limit for each customer you register on your dashboard. Every time you raise and send an invoice on credit to a customer, this credit amount will be automatically updated, showing how much credit is left on this particular customer's account. A positive credit figure will indicate that the customer hasn't exceeded his credit limit yet, and how much credit is available for the customer while a negative credit figure will mean that the customer has exceeded his credit limit and by how much. By directly clicking on the credit limit number, you will be able to view the credit activity for this customer. For the customer, this will show the invoicing activity between 1 to 30 days, 31 to 60 days, and over 60 days. 
This summary provides an immediate snapshot of which invoices have been outstanding the longest and for how long. Next is the customer discount field. This shows the amount of discount you're offering your customer. The discount threshold for each customer is also registered during the customer profiling stage as part of the first step of the revenue map and is linked to this invoice module. You can update the discount rate offered to a customer by clicking on add and manage customers and following stage one of the revenue map. The discount rates entered here will appear on sales invoices here. Next, allocate a payment term for this invoice. Assigning each invoice a payment term is important, as it will allow you to monitor when an invoice is due and likely to be paid. If unpaid, how long has it been overdue? whether a different payment term should be applied for a particular customer based on his payment habits. For example, if a customer is regularly paying an invoice late, a shorter payment term could be applied to the customer. You can select one of the pre-existing standard payment terms already registered in your dashboard. These are cash only, for invoices paid immediately in cash on issue, due by the 15th of the following month, due by the end of the following month, or payment due within 10 days. You can even create a custom payment term by clicking on Add Term. A list of the default payment terms already registered in your dashboard and explained will appear. If you would like to change the name or length of any of the existing payment terms, simply click on the pencil icon, which will allow you to edit any of the existing terms in line with your business. If a payment term is no longer needed, you can delete a term entirely from your dashboard. Select the delete icon. Or if a payment term is temporarily not in use, you can inactivate a payment term by selecting the inactivate option. To create a new custom payment term, Enter the name you would like to give the term in the term description field. Keep in mind when registering the name for a new term as it will appear on all invoices generated from your dashboard and will be visible to your customer. Assign the new term a payment type from the following options. Cash for invoices paid in cash when issued. Prepayment. This is assigned to invoices that are paid in advance, for example, a deposit paid for a contract. After a number of days, if you would like to provide your customer a specific number of days for payment. Day in the following month to receive payment in a specific day in the following month. You can use the above payment types to configure and register as many unique payment terms specific to your business. Next, enter the invoice date for this invoice. By default, this will always display today's current date. However, you can overwrite this to any other date within your company's accounting year. Working your way across the screen, next select the items or services you are invoicing your customer from your drop-down order book. The items you registered in your order book, as shown in stage 2 of the revenue map, will appear here. If you need to register further items in your order book or update existing items, you can do so by simply clicking on the Add Item link and follow the instructions in Stage 2 of the Revenue Map. Once the item to be invoiced is selected, enter the quantity of the item you are invoicing. For example, if it's a product, the number of units, or in the case of a service, the number of hours. Enter the price before tax you are charging for the item, this is for each unit of the item. You may recall the customer discount you entered during the customer profiling stage in Stage 1. This will appear here by default. However, you can overwrite this to any other discount rate of your choice. Once all the details for this item have been entered, click on Add Item. 
Now a transaction line is created. For each of the items being invoiced, be they a service or a product, a new transaction line needs to be created. You can always edit a transaction line by clicking on the pencil icon or delete it entirely using the delete icon and start a new transaction line. The subtotal at the bottom will update automatically, showing the total of all the transaction lines you have entered. If your business is VAT registered and you are charging the customer VAT, the VAT amount will be added automatically to the subtotal. However, if some of the items included are exempt from VAT, the invoice will not calculate VAT on these items. In Stage 2 of the Revenue Map Order Book, when registering an item of stock or service, the option to elect a certain item as vatable or non vatable was provided. Therefore, any items that are registered as vatable in your order book, the VAT on them will be automatically calculated and added here. Any items that were registered as non vatable in your order book will have no VAT calculated on them and will be invoiced in net. This tag automatically ensures that the VAT amount included on your invoices are correct by including the VAT on vatable items and excluding the VAT on non vatable items. Finally, the amount total displayed will add the subtotal and the VAT amounts. Moving to the next section of the screen, depending on the payment terms selected for this invoice, the due date for this invoice will be calculated automatically based on this payment term selected above and will calculate based from the date of the invoice. The deliver to or invoice to name and address will be automatically collected from the customer details entered in the customer setup section discussed in stage one. You can visit the first stage of the revenue map at any time by clicking here. You can leave these details as they are or overwrite them with different details. Moving across the screen, enter the customer reference for this invoice. This is separate from the invoice reference you entered earlier and relates purely for this customer. The customer reference relates to a referencing system used to identify a customer. The comment section can be used to add a custom note or a memo relating to this invoice. For example, thank you for your business, or informing your customer of a special offer you currently have on certain products or services. All the details selected and entered on this screen will appear at various points on the final printed invoice. Finally, have a quick browse of the information entered and select the Place Invoice button. The invoice is now recorded in your dashboard and a confirmation message will appear, confirming the invoice has been entered correctly. This confirmation screen will present you with a few further options from this invoice. You can view the invoice to see how it is recorded in your dashboard. You can print the invoice. This will generate a PDF of the invoice, and this is how your customer will view the invoice. It is populated based on the entries and fields selected previously. At the bottom of the invoice, you will also note an area to enter your company's bank details. It is particularly helpful for your customer and efficient for your company 
to have your company's bank account and sort code details on your invoice in case the customer wants to pay via BAX or an online transfer. Having your bank details clearly displayed on your invoice will only help to ensure the invoice is paid on time. To register your business's bank details in your dashboard so they appear on all invoices, Start by selecting the Banking and General Ledger tab. Select the Bank Accounts button, which is the 12th button from the top, on the left. Here, you will see a list of all the bank accounts currently registered in your dashboard. To register your bank account details, select the current account by clicking on the pencil mark. In the Bank Name field, enter the name of your bank, for example, NetWest. In the Bank Account Number field, enter the 8-digit account number, followed by the 6-digit sort code. You can also enter the address of your bank in the Address field. Click on Add New and the bank details entered will be saved as the default bank account in your dashboard. These bank details will now appear on every invoice you generate from your dashboard and sent to your customer. You can instantly email this invoice. It is always recommended to email an invoice to the customer as soon as it is raised. By selecting the email link, it will open an email window. The email address of your customer will be collected from the customer profile section and be pre-entered. You can add another email address if you want to include someone else's email. The email heading will be the invoice number you have just generated, however this can be overwritten. A default message will appear addressing your customer, including your company's logo and details. You can modify the default message and add a custom message in the message box if you like. The invoice you have generated is already attached to the email. You can add additional documents or files if needed from your local computer. Clicking on send will send the email with the invoices as an attachment. The final option allows you to see the accounting entries for the invoice. For example, where the net, VAT and gross amounts have been recorded in your dashboard. It is always useful to view these after each invoice to ensure the numbers are ending up in the correct general ledger accounts in your company's books. Once an invoice is entered, you may wish to modify or edit it, in case an error was made. To edit an invoice from the customer areas of your dashboard, select the Customer Transaction Inquiry tab. Start by selecting the customer to whom the invoice was issued from the drop-down menu. Expand on the date range using the From and To fields so the invoice you would like to edit is displayed. Locate the invoice you would like to edit using the reference date and the customer name as a guide. To amend the invoice, select the pencil edit option. You will now see the modify invoice screen displaying the items that were originally invoiced. From the list of items originally invoiced, locate and edit the item or items which you would like to change. Using the delivered column to see what was originally invoiced, you can use this invoice fields to overwrite the quantity of items invoiced. For example, if three units of the items were originally invoiced and you would like to change this to two, simply enter two in the this invoice box. Select update followed by process invoice. To, the amended invoice will be processed 
and update it in your dashboard. As for the original invoice function, this amended invoice can also be viewed, printed and emailed to your customer directly from your dashboard. You also may wish to credit part or full of an invoice. A credit note is raised when an item or service provided is being refunded. There could be several reasons for this. The items were not what was originally ordered and the customer is returning them. The customer is unable to pay for the full items invoiced. Or a discount is being added to the invoice. To credit an invoice already raised in your dashboard, again, go to the Customer Transaction Inquiry tab. Locate the invoice you would like to credit and select the Credit Invoice icon. The Credit Invoice screen will now appear. Similar to when amending an invoice, the Credit Invoice screen allows you to either edit the whole or part of the invoice. To credit any of the items invoiced using the invoiced quantity fields as a guide, enter the quantity of the items you would like to credit using the credit quantity fields. Once the quantities have been updated, click on Update. The subtotal at the bottom will update with the price of the quantity of the items being credited. Once the quantities of the items you would like to credit have been updated, you can assign this particular credit note a type. This is to indicate what happened with the goods that were returned by your customer. That is, the items were returned to their original location, or the items were written off due to wear and tear. This information will not appear on the final printed credit note, but is more for your own record. You can use the memo field to add further comments relating to this credit note. For example, a personalized message for your customer on why the credit was given or a brief memo on a special offer you may have currently going. This memo will appear on the final printed invoice. Have a quick scan to see if everything looks okay and click on Process Credit Note. The credit note is now prepared and recorded in your dashboard. As when raising an invoice, your dashboard will give you a number of options. You can view the full details of the credit note, you can print the credit note as a PDF. You can email the credit note instantly directly from your dashboard. This is highly recommended to avoid delays and for maintaining good customer relations. View the accounting entries for this credit note now, that is, which nominal and customer accounts were affected by this credit note. This tutorial has demonstrated how you can manage your invoicing and ensure complete, accurate, and timely invoices are prepared and sent to your customers. The next tutorial in the series focuses on all the important follow-up procedures for your customers. You can always refer to any of the previous tutorials by clicking on the links here. We hope you found this tutorial helpful. Ensure to view the other helpful accounting tutorials in the Klarman's Accounting 2.0 series.